Hey there, welcome back to Black Lotus. Uh, today we are going to be talking about uh, haunted and possibly possessed dolls. Do, do dolls creep you out at all? Yeah. Do they? Uh, well, for a reason that we'll talk about later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you have that haunted ventriloquist head at one time. But, you know, they've always creeped me out. You know, I mean, and, and I, I'm like this with dolls like a lot of people are about clowns they just I, I i can't even look at them you know i mean and i'm not talking about like barbie dolls and gi joes and that kind of i'm talking about the dolls that are like the old porcelain time porcelain ones. things yeah uh my ex once uh brought me to a doll shop not knowing this about me and i was like i'm not going in there <laughs> and she goes why not and I'm like, dolls creep me out. She's like, oh, don't be a baby. So I, I, I couldn't get out of there fast enough. I, I, the place just creeped me out. You know, because they're just cold, lifeless eyes, you know. And just, you know, and we're going to be talking about dolls that are a little more lively than that. So, but uh, anyway, before we do get into that, I want to uh, remind everybody that we have a uh, group over at Facebook called the Black Lotus Discussion Group. And if you're into the topics that we talk about here at Black Lotus, uh, definitely go over there and uh, join that group. We've got a lot of great people there. You know, we've got some experts in the paranormal and uh, UFOs and uh, uh, ufology and that kind of thing. And uh, But yeah, they're definitely a great bunch of people, so definitely hook up. I'll put uh, the link down in the description for you as well. Um, and also, don't forget to uh, like and subscribe to us. Uh, if uh, you're watching us on uh, YouTube, definitely subscribe, and uh, 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 we like the thumbs up, so uh, give us a thumbs up. Uh, we also have a podcast, uh, and we are over at Anchor, and I'll drop a link for that as well, and definitely follow us over there. Uh, but uh, anyway, let's get on with this today, man. Um, so I think the first one we should talk about is one that you had brought up uh, that I didn't know anything about, and that was... Uh, uh, Pascualita? Is Pascualita. That? Pascualita, yeah. okay. Yeah, La Pascualita. She's over in uh, Chihuahua City in Mexico at a shop called La Popular. Okay. Now, beautiful doll, really. It's Yeah, it's actually a life size mannequin. Oh, it's life size. Yeah. I see, I see. And the reason that I brought it up to, because I came across it while looking up haunted dolls and stuff, this is uh, from the 1930s. It's been in the window since uh, March 25th of 1930. Now, what makes this unique is that this is supposedly not even a mannequin, that this is actually a real live human being that's been mummified. Oh, is that right? Supposedly, the daughter of the shop died and couldn't handle that so he uh mummified her now what's really if you look at the hands the hands on this look so lifelike mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and people come from miles around to see this doll well and and, and the face as well it looks, looks very lifelike very lifelike know? so yeah and if you put pictures together i've seen pictures of the actual daughter and the mannequin they look exactly alive is that right really so i know it's not really a haunted doll but i thought it was worth bringing kind of creepy in any definitely case. <laughs> definitely um and then you were telling me about this other one called uh, uh letta Lita? yeah that's from brisbane australia letta it's actually letta me out is the full name okay okay because supposedly it's haunted now what they've been having happen with this doll is not only have people seen it move it likes to move objects around the house on people oh really and also they'll wake up and find little scuff marks from where the doll has gone mm -hmm. can you imagine that waking up in the middle of the day or in the middle of the morning and seeing little <laughs> footprints going across your floor I don't know. I had that happen when I had a toddler in the house. <laughs> you know? Well, look at this thing, though. Yeah. That's a lot scarier than a toddler. Well, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, the thing is really creepy. They, I guess it, it's they've had people seeing objects move near it. Uh, it goes around at night. It's People have actually seen it moving around. Now, right now, it's owned by Kerry Warwick and uh, Warwick Queensland okay. is the owner of it now, and I don't know about you, but I wouldn't want to buy it. No, well, first of all, I, I, I think it's kind of ugly. You know? Yeah, you know, it's kind of yeah. You know. It's more than ugly. It's creepy ugly. Now, are, were there any reports on this uh, doll uh, causing any kind of havoc? No, just moving things around and itself people seeing it move uh -huh, uh -huh. so it hasn't caused any havoc yet like some of the other ones will be so people have about. actually seen it move they people have actually it. seen it move yeah 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 I, I i think those stories about dolls are 
fascinating when, when when people have reported seeing them move now on youtube you see all these videos out there where uh, uh you see these dolls and they're moving and you know doll caught moving on tape kind of thing and right. it's, it's so hoaxed you know it's it's just so obviously hoaxed but but i know that people have seen certain dolls move you know right. on their own um, uh, I've, I've heard of, of reports from like old antique shops where people have reported you know they have these porcelain dolls and they've watch them actually turn their head you know or their eyes move or something you know yeah, so, yeah. i don't know <laughs> but uh but speaking of dolls that move uh i don't think we could have a show like this without talking about annabelle of course you know one of the most famous ones absolutely one of the most famous ones um and annabelle annabelle is is, is very different from the way it's depicted in the hollywood movies you know, I mean, first of all, they uh, uh, turned Annabelle into this porcelain uh, thing, you know, and, and, you know, and creeped it out entirely. Right. You know, but in reality, Annabelle was a big raggedy Ann doll, you know, and uh, but the story about Annabelle basically began back in 1970 and a 28 year old nurse uh, received the Raggedy Ann doll uh, as a birthday gift from her from her mom, and this uh, woman had a, a, a roommate, and um, so. But anyway, she she put the doll on her bed, and she liked the doll. Apparently, she put the doll on her bed, and she would notice that it was moved in certain ways. You know, in other words, you know, like it was lying down, or its its legs were crossed. Now. Thinking about this, I want to, you know, she did have a roommate and I wonder if the roommate was messing with her, but there was other things that happened later on. Like, like for instance, uh, 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 they, they found, they found, uh, um, uh, pieces of parchment paper that would read, help me help us. And the weird thing about that is that they reportedly didn't have any parchment paper in the house. Interesting. Yeah. That's very strange. And. Apparently, there was a guy, a friend of theirs, I don't know if he was the boyfriend of somebody or another, but he was taking a nap, and he woke up from the nap with Annabelle staring at him, and the reason he woke up is because he couldn't breathe, and he then found out that he had these uh, uh, scratched claw marks on his chest. So, that wasn't all. There were, there were a lot of other incidents, and so... Not knowing what to do, the girls turned to a medium and had a seance. And the medium found out that there was a little girl by the name of Annabelle Higgins that had lived in that household before they had turned it into apartments. And she had died and she was like seven years old. So uh, uh, Annabelle told the medium that she felt comfortable with these people and wanted to stay with them and be loved. So what did the girls do? They invited Annabelle to uh, inhabit the doll's body. Not real smart. In my no. Opinion. You know, I mean, my God. How then you wonder why you're having problems. You know, and so, and then, and then they continue to have these issues, you know, I mean, and so big surprise, you know? So anyway, uh, 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 Ed and Lorraine Warren, those famous demonologists, uh, caught uh, uh, this whole thing caught their attention, and so they went in to investigate the whole thing, and they were welcomed by the girls. Um, and uh, of course, the Warrens, being demonologists and not you know ghost hunters, they immediately assumed uh, that Annabelle was not inhabited by a spirit of a little girl, but in fact, like a demonic entity, you know? And so, um, but I, I, I don't, I don't know. What do you think about this? I, the Warrens give me pause. Yeah. But if this people were having problems before the Warrens even got involved in it, I kind of, it's kind of creepy. Yeah, yeah. I would like to know what's going to happen with the doll now. Well, right, since, uh, you know, Ed's, Ed's, Ed's gone. And he died a while back. And, and uh, uh, Lorraine just recently, recently died. So I don't know what's happening with their estate. But, you know, Anna, Annabelle was in their downstairs basement in, in, in their collection of these uh, weird things. Yeah, kept um, in a box. Kept locked. in a, like a wooden box with a, uh, uh, 
you can still see Annabelle, right. but but it's it's through a piece a of glass glass and glass. Yeah, case. they have big instructions over the thing. Don't touch, you know. Don't open, you know. Um, but yeah, I, I I don't know. I think I think Annabelle could be a real story. Uh, you know, I, I do believe that you know dolls can be possessed or haunted. Oh, I definitely believe that. Yeah, and and so I don't know what's going to happen with Annabelle now, but who knows? I mean. It's still there, as far as I know. Um, I know, I, I think uh, Zach Baggins put a bid on it, but I don't know if he got it or not. Do you know anything about that? I have no idea if he yeah. got it or not. Yeah. So if, if that's sure the case... I'm sure if he does, we'll hear plenty about it. Yeah, and if that's a case, then he'll uh, 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 get it here in Las Vegas at his... Uh, 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 museum. Haunted museum, and you know he try, charges an outrageous amount to get into that. It's like forty five bucks a person, but you know what? If he had Annabelle, might I might consider it. it. <laughs> I might consider it. You know, because I, I I find the story of Annabelle pretty fascinating, actually. Well, if you want a haunted doll head, I can always call and get mine brought here. Oh man, yeah. Let's talk about that damn thing. <laughs> I should have sent you a picture of that. Um, it was like a Charlie McCar- McCarthy. Uh, ventriloquist dummy head and uh, I had it for a while I had it since I was like you know six or seven years old and all that was left was the head so I had it on a uh, pylon like construction cone type pylons and uh, nobody liked it everybody thought it looked creepy well it was creepy <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of times when people uh, came to visit and stuff like that they would take it and turn the head around so the head was facing the wall I would Yep. But the only problem with that was is we'd be sitting there and all of a sudden we'd look over and the doll would be back facing you. Staring right at me. You know, I didn't like it and it doesn't like me, I don't think. I was but, amazed at how many times that that doll head would move. You know, I mean, and it was so weird. Nobody ever really saw it move. No, but nobody ever went near it either. Right, right. So, I mean, I remember going over there and turning, turning the doll's head around because I didn't, I didn't want it staring at me. And then, you know, I'm sitting there talking and not really paying attention and then look back over and there it is staring at me again. And, but yeah, I, but yeah, I, I don't think it ever hurt anybody and it never. No. Uh, it growled at a cat once. Yeah. My yeah, friend I heard, Kat. heard about that. Yeah. She, it growled at her once, but besides but she, that. She threw it under the bed, didn't she? Right. She yeah, threw well, it under the bed. <laughs> I think I'd growl at her too. <laughs> you know? But besides being haunted, I think it was bringing a lot of bad luck. Yeah, yeah, I really do. I think a lot of my bad luck that had happened throughout the years was because of that thing. So, excuse me. So when I moved here, I decided not to take it with me. Mm-hmm. I left it there in Maine. Yeah. Let other people deal with it. <laughs> Should have left behind a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. let's talk about uh, that other one. You Okiku? Were Okiku, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Okiku was in, uh, found in... Hokadu in a Manigial temple. Um, what's it? What? <laughs> just, you just cracked me up whenever you tried to pronounce foreign names. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, she was bought for a little t- a teenage girl in 1918, and the girl uh, unfortunately passed away. But they believed that when she died, the spirit took over this body of this doll. Mm. Now, the strange thing about this doll is that it's kept in a temple and worshipped, but the priest in that temple has to every once in a while go and trim its hair because its hair keeps growing. Oh, really? So even though it's only a doll, they have to cut its hair. Supposedly the hair grows quite a bit. I thought that was kind of interesting. The first time I ever heard of a doll with hair that grows. Does it do anything else? Or does it, nope. Does it, it move around or anything? Nope. It, do, it doesn't move around or anything. It's worshipped by this family, obviously, because they said the little girl's uh, body is right. possessed by it, or right. she possesses the body of right. the doll. Right. But yeah, huh. I thought that. I just thought that was interesting to bring up that a doll with the hair grows, and they have the priest has to trim it for it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what we, what 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 could be the possible explanation for that? You know, it, that's. How does fake hair grow? Right, right. Strange. Um, getting back to kind of a a, a scary possession. Um, there's a now if 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 you've ever watched um, 
uh, what was that show called with Ozzy Osbourne and his son Jack? It was uh, like a travel show. Yeah, a travel show. I can't. I, you know, uh, I can't Ozzy and Jack's World Detour. Ah, uh, okay. There you go. Um, at one point, uh, Jack got a hold of a doll by the name of Robert. It was actually he, he had a replica doll that was bought in the gift shop. Oh, is that what it was? I yeah. thought. Oh, okay, no, he didn't I, actually have the real doll. I was wondering how he managed to get the doll because the doll is under safekeeping now right. in a museum. So I thought, well, maybe they just lent it. Being who he is, maybe they just loaned it to him. But no, the gift shop sells uh, fake oh. replicas of the doll. I, I don't. I don't think I'd even want a fake version of this hanging no. around my house. It's really creepy looking. Um, I mean, what what it basically is? It's it's a little boy in a sailor suit, and he is his. Face is, you know, obviously careworn, um, and it's only you know, vaguely human, um, and it's it's just got a nub of a nose and a pair, of, you know, it's just kind of got like a pinholes for a nose, and then it's got a smirk that he's got on his face, and um, and then in his lap is his own toy, and it's a little dog, and it's creepy looking too because it's got these eyes that pop out, you know, and that kind of thing. But uh, anyway, Robert uh, is 111 years old, and he lives at the Fort East uh, Martello Museum in Key West, Florida. And before that, he was the property of Robert Eugene Otto, um, and uh, he was uh, given... I hate this thing. Sorry, guys. You know, he did that. Uh, the doll was once at uh, Zach Brannigan's. He borrowed it for a while in oh, 2015. He did. Yeah. Did he? But anyway, it was it was owned by uh, uh, this guy by the name of Robert Otto, and um, he uh, he had kind of an unhealthy relationship. And he was he was given the doll by his grandfather when he was a child, but as he grew, he would never um, uh, relinquish the doll. And he kind of had a really unhealthy relationship with the doll. And he talked about the doll as though the doll was alive his whole life. And yeah, and so, and, and anytime that somebody badmouthed Otto, uh, they say that the doll's expression changed to oh. anger, you know? Um, but again, as Otto grew older, weird things started to happen. Um, around the house, you know, and he would blame Robert for it. And, um, and you know, you could normally discount that off as, as being just, you know, something that you know, kids wild imagination, but then adults started noticing things going wrong. Like things were getting broken. Uh, they would notice that he's, uh, not, not in the same, uh, chair as he was left. Um, a couple of them reported him actually moving, um, but well, he was blamed for everything from he, car accidents to yep, divorce. Yep, yep. So, yeah. Now, how much of this I believe, I don't know. But I do know that um, he now resides at that museum. And the curator there um, has said that he <laughs> he's a special... Um, there are fans of this thing. And... <laughs> excuse me. Bless you. And he, he's uh, part of a ghost tour. And he receives fan mail. Wow. And she says that he probably gets, you know, between one to three letters a day, you know, and they're not the normal uh, fan mail kind of things. Um, you know, so, you know how you would write to a celebrity and right. just express, you know, that you're a big fan. They're usually letters of apologies, you know, because they would go, people would go there and apparently, um, uh, I'm trying to do three things at once, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> but anyway, uh, apparently they would go there and either they would uh, uh, not show him any respect or, or show him actual disrespect. And so what they would end up doing is they would like go back home and all kinds of bad things would happen to them. And so they were attributing it to Robert. And so they write to Robert and ask his forgiveness, you know, and uh, beg for, you know, their apologies. And... Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's just kind of weird, man. I mean, and they even, they, he even gets letters uh, from people who want him to put a hex on somebody, 
on their enemies or something like that. You know, and I just thought, well, wow, you know. But yeah, he's 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 apparently responsible for a lot of bad crap. You know? I had never heard of Robert before until I actually saw him on Ozzy and Jack's Right. That show. was the first time I saw it, yeah. But he Ozzy hated that doll. Even oh, yeah. the even the replica one of it. I would too. Like I said, I wouldn't want a replica of that thing in the house. In one episode, uh, Ozzy even went and buried it on a beach and didn't tell anybody where. And Jack found it and brought it back and put it on his bed and freaked him out. (laughs) Ozzy cracks me up. Yeah. He really does. But uh, anyway, so yeah, like I said, dolls creep me out. They always have. You know, and especially those porcelain dolls. I mean, they're just creepy to look at, you know. And so, I mean, I'll never have one in my house. There's no way. Thank God my wife's not into these things, you know. I heard uh, Anne Rice is into porcelain dolls. She's got a ton of them. Yeah, I wouldn't want to go there. Yeah, Jesus. (laughs) But uh, anyway, let's get out of here, man. Sounds good. Until next time, folks. Keep listening. Keep thinking. (laughs) Question everything. (laughs)